Welcome back everyone to a new season of the Infinitely Galactic channel. It has been a little while, but today we're not here to talk about that. We're here to talk about Fedora. It's been an interesting couple of months in that I've given myself a bit of distance from the Linux world and Linux coverage, and, uh, and I've been hopping back into it recently, and an overwhelming narrative seems to get stronger and stronger. And that is that when it comes to desktop Linux usage, more and more podcasters, YouTubers, and uh, other media outlets all seem to be gravitating around Fedora Linux. Now, Fedora 36 came out some about a month ago now, maybe a bit longer than that, and it has garnered, like many of the recent Fedora releases, much positive buzz. So today, I'm wanting to look into Fedora 36 from a more of a zoomed out perspective. Uh, having been around the, the Linux YouTubing scene for a little while now, I wanted to dive into why has Fedora Linux become the default Linux desktop? Okay, reason number one, they pioneer a lot of standards for the Linux desktop. So while in contrast, while Ubuntu has developed a lot of technologies for the Linux desktop over the last 15 years or so, and one could argue that no desktop distribution has made more of an impact in the industry than Ubuntu, it seems like in the last five years or so, more of Ubuntu's in-house projects have advantaged Ubuntu in some way, but as their focus seems to have pivoted away from the desktop, the, uh, the slack or the features that a lot of desktop users care about have gravitated more towards Fedora. So for example, where uh, Pulse Audio became an, an audio standard, Fedora was one of the first to adopt it. When Systemd became a, a, a viable option for the desktop, and while some are still a bit sore about that, it was technologically, looking back now, just a better option. The same could be said for things like Wayland and Pipewire and BTRFS and Flatpak and many more standards that have become kind of expected to see in a Linux desktop in 2022. And the other thing that Fedora became really good at was pioneering and, and showcasing a vanilla or default desktop environment as the developers of that desktop environment envisioned it. Rather than retrofitting new projects to suit old design paradigms like we had with Ubuntu, nowadays trying to retrofit GNOME 40 series into a Ubuntu sort of shell, Fedora has been able to pioneer a standard of what these desktop environments look like in their original glory. Second reason, I think Fedora has shown a consistent commitment to the why behind open source. They don't just see open source technology as a means to an end. They actually want to see the open source software world grow and benefit from their project. They have a sort of purist pragmatism when it comes to implementing technology in a way that makes sense for their users, but also uh, rides that balance between also providing a free, as in Libre, free as in open source, etc., uh, experience as well that's not tainted by end user license agreements or other agreements in the software. They also, as I've mentioned, champion the upstream versions of all of their projects. And there's a careful attention to detail of a very strategic and well-engineered implementation of newer technologies. Like all the ones that I mentioned before, Fedora adopted those technologies, probably arguably the first in a mainstream desktop distribution, but also when those features were ready and it invests significant time and effort into making sure that those features are ready. Third reason why I think Fedora is fast becoming the default desktop distro is because it seems to be able to have the right balance of having a corporate interest both ways. What I mean by this is compared to Ubuntu, which offers the same product to all of its customers and then offers support as a way to uh, add value to the proposition for businesses, Fedora manages to make a distri uh, distribution that is for the community by the community, but also is heavily compatible with Red Hat Enterprise Linux, which is their commercial offering. Other IT companies want to be able to support Red Hat Enterprise Linux, so they will therefore su help support the development of Fedora. Devs and sysadmins want to know how to manage Red Hat Enterprise Linux, and so they likely use and recommend Fedora. And funding and volunteer time can work simultaneously for the benefit of both projects. The average desktop Linux user can benefit from the development that goes into Red Hat and vice versa. And the funding that goes into Red Hat can help benefit Fedora. Fourth reason why I think this is fast becoming a default desktop distro is because the defaults on this distribution have become so much better even in the last five years. Go back and watch a few videos in my catalog of some of the older Fedora releases circa 20. 
17 or so. And you'll see that there's not as much pragmatism when it comes to the defaults that these desktops used. Nowadays, those defaults are not only improved, I'm thinking about things like Nvidia driver support, Wayland, Flatpak being available out of the box, limited RPM fusion uh, repositories enabled out of the box, MP3 codecs, etc., etc. But also those defaults have become a lot more dependable. The consistent improvement that people have seen in Fedora over the last five years, especially, and maybe even the last two years more acutely, and also combined with the fact that a lot of these technologies have just matured. Wayland's matured, Nvidia support has got better, like I've said. Updates have become more regular. The release cadence of Fedora becomes more regular. It's led to Fedora as a project settling in a reputation of being a leading edge distribution. Not so in the front of the pack that it hurts, but far enough ahead and regularly updated so that you get all the latest goodies without sacrificing stability. And the fifth and final reason is that I think Fedora has done a great job in recent years of engaging with the community. They have a bunch of documentation that has consistently grown over the last few years. They have a lot of great spins and versions of Fedora uh, in their Fedora labs, which are targeted at different communities of users like gamers, artists, etc. The exposure and praise that Fedora as a project has gotten from podcasts and YouTubers, etc. points to the fact that Fedora has gone to a lot of efforts at some point to raise their profile in the social media space. And it's definitely worked. I mean, here I am talking about it. And finally, this is like a small thing, but I think it's important. There is a branded USB installer tool that can really help the onboarding process when it comes to installing Fedora for the first time or dual booting with Mac OS or Windows. I think this goes a long way to helping onboard new users, make it easy for them to be able to download and install Fedora on their machines. Don't underestimate the small things. So there you go. There's five reasons why I think Fedora has become a new default desktop distro of sorts. What do you think? Let me know in the comments. Thanks for watching. I'll see you in the next one.